Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and talk about how you might use them in your current campaigns. This week is another Gazetteer video. This is where I just talk about several topics, usually things that are current in the RPG community. I mentioned in my last video that I was waiting on my print-on-demand copy of the classic D&D Rules Cyclopedia. Well, it finally arrived, and boy, do I have a saga to tell. Also, this thing. Wow, into the borderlands. It's filling mailboxes all over the country, and your friendly local game store as well. And how could I not talk about that? So, let's just dive right in. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you may recall a few years ago, I did a comprehensive history on basic Dungeons & Dragons, and it has been the topic for several of my RPG retro reviews. The Rules Cyclopedia review was a major three-part undertaking talking about the game's history, the world of Mastara, and the rulebook itself. If you've never watched it, then I highly recommend you check it out because the reason for my enthusiasm for this print-on-demand product may not be readily apparent. Briefly, the Rules Cyclopedia was a compilation of the basic, expert, companion, and master rules box sets all reorganized in one volume and was, in the opinion of many, one of the best products TSR ever produced. The popularity of the work is evident in that getting a quality print copy has been an expensive endeavor with eBay, listings going for $80 or more, frequently going for around $100 for those in really good condition. Therefore, one might imagine my excitement when the DM's Guild listed the Roll Cyclopedia for $31.99 for a hardcover copy and newly scanned PDF. I ordered my copy immediately and waited with bated breath for it to arrive in the mail. Now I've ordered a lot of retro reprints from the DMs Guild and have always been pretty satisfied with what I received. Many such orders indistinguishable from the original. Within a week I got a notice my order was on its way. Then within another week it arrived on my doorstep. Eagerly, I opened the box to gaze upon a piece of gaming deliciousness I had not seen in print in nearly 25 years and found... Uh, unearthed Arcana? What? Okay, well, no problem. Mistakes happen. I'll just email support and fix this. So that's what I did. Support was very friendly. They assured me that they were aware of the glitch with the printers and would get me my new rule cyclopedia out in the mail soon. Also, as a member of several OSR groups on Facebook, I saw that other people had encountered the same issue, so certainly this little issue would be taken care of. Two weeks later, a package arrived on my doorstep, and immediately I knew it wasn't right before I opened it because of the thickness of the box and the weight. And sure enough, another copy of Unearthed Akana are you kidding me? Oh, God. All right. So, more emails back and forth. More assurances the problem was fixed. I was given credit on my account to make me feel better. And another three weeks go by. Emails and assurances are exchanged and a package arrived on my doorstep. This one much heavier than the previous two. And lo and behold, I now own a pristine, lovely copy of the D&D Rules Cyclopedia. Success! It was a bit more dramatic than I prefer, but the end result is a beautiful book inside and out. Crisp, clear pages, color printing. The color Mistara maps in the back are gorgeous. Easily worth the zero dollars that I ended up paying for it after selling one of my extra copies of Unearthed Arcana to a friend on one of my Facebook groups. Hmm, now, what am I going to do with this other one? Hmm. I also ordered DDR2 D&D &D Creature Catalog, the perfect companion to the Rules Cyclopedia. This one expands the original AC9 version, adding 18 new monsters and expanded descriptions and artwork, and is also available for print-on-demand for only $16.99, and you don't get a free copy of the Unearthed Arcana to go with it. Unfortunately, it seems. Uh, this one came in without any problems whatsoever. If you're a fan of this rule set and are looking for a printed copy, this is certainly worth getting. 
So uh, I've checked out the maps. I've checked out all the different er uh, sections of the book. Uh, it's concise. It's well put together. Uh, it looks great and uh, certainly will hold up for the next couple of years of gaming. And you got, you're certainly to have a lot of fun with this rule set. With the popularity of OSR games, how could you not pick up this rule set? So let me highly recommend that you uh, get up the DMs Guild now and pick up a print copy of the rule cyclopedia. So, moving on, into the Borderlands, I got this a full month earlier than projected, and I meant to do this video a while back, but, you know, real life and uh, things have interfered, and I finally managed to get around to it, and I've got quite a few more videos in the queue, so uh, please stay tuned for those. Um, and I have to say that this is an amazing piece of work. As I already stated, I did a comprehensive video review of this module in 2015, so I'm not going to go into the detail of Keep on the Borderlands here, but I'm going to focus primarily on what's in this massive 384-page tome. Seriously, this thing is a monster, and it's quite clear this project was a labor of love for Goodman Games and a homage to not just one, but two of the most iconic modules in D&D &D history. So let's go over what you get and then I'll give my evaluation. First, there's the articles. The adventure that thousands of gamers shared, including me, is the first one by Luke Gygax. Since his father's death, Luke has stepped up and been there as an ambassador to old school gaming and D&D &D in general. It's clear that, like all of us, he's an, as enamored with the hobby as we are. And this discussion on his experience with Keep on the Borderlands as a child, run by the master DM himself, is a wonderful, nostalgic, and touching look back at this bit of RPG history. And being the sentimental sap I am, I was totally choking up as I read it. Next up is Of Keeps, Borderlands, and Searches of the Unknown by Mike Morals, which focuses on the design elements of the module and how it lays the groundwork for what D&D is. These are good points, and I can only add that Keep, along with many of Gygax's early modules like the Village of Hamlet, Against the Giants, and Descent into the Depths of the Earth, laid the framework for exactly how to create an engaging fantasy gaming setting that is still followed to this day. After that is Discovering the Caves of Chaos by Harley Stroh. I love that they included an article by Stroh here as he is a prolific and established module designer in his own right and many of his adventures for the original Dungeon Crawl Classic series, Into the Wilds, Saga of the Rat King, War of the Witch Queen, among others, are some of my favorite for the third edition of the game. In addition to being the line editor for Goodman Games' own Dungeon Crawl Classics RPG, his musings on the keep are quite interesting and I love that he also justifies the densely populated caves by suggesting that they are drawn there by the Temple of Evil Chaos in Cave K, just like I did back in my own video review in 2015. The next 10 pages or so have articles from industry notables about the keep and in search of the unknown. An interesting standout for me is the article about the dis and dat cover Art of B1 in Search of the Unknown, and the similar art piece by Dave Trampier in an old Polyhedron magazine. As an old school trivia guy, the story behind this dual credit art piece was really interesting. After the series of articles, we get an original reprint of B1 in Search of the Unknown. There are two things that really made B1 a memorable and standout module. It was originally included in the Holmes basic set from 1978 to 1979, and like B2, is a teaching module. But B1 didn't include specific monster encounters, but instead had blank spaces left for the DM to populate their version with creatures and treasure of their own choosing. The other thing that made the module memorable were the keyed traps. The pool room is a classic example of just what old-school D&D was like and the kind of puzzle-solving that made early D&D enjoyable and why many grognards who went through this adventure back in the day look back on those experiences with fondness. Just as a side note, here is a print-on-demand copy that I got from the DMs Guild of uh, B1 in Search of the Unknown. Uh, it wasn't very expensive. I think it was like 
ten dollars or so for the print on demand copy so if you want to adjust the module in print uh, to run for your old school games I highly recommend you check that out I should be getting a commission from the dance guild for this for this video shouldn't I anyway included here is the original monochrome edition and the 1981 color reprint with the Darlene cover art though everything here in this section is black and white also included are three different stocked and counter examples from three different writers for the open rooms from the module all in basic D&D format which the DM can use directly or as examples to serve as inspiration for their own encounters when one looks back at early D&D artwork such artists as Jeff D, Earl Otis, David Trampier or David Sutherland are mentioned in the Who's the Best discussions. Darlene rarely comes up, and when she does, it's usually only to mention the Greyhawk maps, but in my opinion, her illustrations are top-notch and absolutely among the best of the old-school classics. Of course, there is a 5th edition update to this module, which updates the monsters and encounters to align with 5th edition gameplay. There is a redrawn map, and thankfully, the number scheme is changed to the more common Arabic numbering as opposed to the unwieldy Roman numeral room numbering used in the original. Furthermore, the module is expanded upon in several areas with additional details for many encounters, a newly created secret cave passage that leads to the Caves of Chaos, and by adding the Lonely Tower which was alluded to in the original module as an above-ground watchtower, but never described in detail. I love that essentially they made Quas Quentin the Cave of the Unknown from the original Keep on the Borderlands module, which is something that I think many of us did back in the day, and was also a suggestion from the Silver Anniversary Edition of Keep on the Borderlands. After In Search of the Unknown, the module then goes into the reprints for Keep on the Borderlands. Both editions of the module are reproduced here. The first is what many refer to as the Holmes edition, as it was the one that was included in the Holmes basic version of the rules, and in addition to having some different artwork and missing some other pieces, is notable in that the creature stats have a deck score to be compatible with the Holmes basic rule set. The second is the one most are familiar with and came with the Maldve basic set. The reprints here are functional, though the black and white map reprints of the Caves of Chaos are really just filler pages and completely useless. They are too small and too lightly printed and printed sideways to be of any use whatsoever for a DM to use during actual play. Though, fortunately, the inside covers of the book have the larger original blue map reprinted. These are actually quite usable, and there is a reprint of the Caves of Chaos, as well as the Quas Quentin maps. After the reprints, we get into the 5th edition section of the book. This begins in Chapter 5, page 182, with advice for Dungeon Masters. There's really nothing revolutionary here, but for new players who might be purchasing this product, it will probably be useful. It's clear that Goodman Games intends this to generally be usable as an introductory product for the 5th edition of the game. And while one might question just how many new DMs will be forking over $50 for this book, the work has been put into it so it generally can be used in that way. Like In Search of the Unknown, the 5th edition version of the adventure is greatly expanded upon. The Keep, the Wilderness, and the Caves of Chaos all get redrawn map updates, which look great. Furthermore, the wilderness area is greatly expanded upon, going from 4 in the original module to 13 in the 5th edition version. For this update, the writers turn to the 25th anniversary module, Return to the Keep on the Borderlands, by John D. Ratliff. The B-Man from the module makes a reappearance, as well as some of the names, the river called the Goblin Water, the coniferous patch of forest called the Whispering Wood. Many, but not all, the NPCs in the Keep are given names. For example, the trader's name is Khalid, the smithy is Gore, and the jewel merchant is Lotus. Though the bailiff, the evil clerics, and the provisioner are not given names, the castellan is given the name Farrakh, and there is a new NPC, Maravak, who serves as the castellan's advisor and potential ally or foil for the player characters. He has an interest in Quas Quentin and might serve as a pathway to that adventure, 
and a link to the two modules. Apparently, the names in the module are taken from the 2001 novelization of the module by Rue Emerson. Furthermore, there are three new caves added, L, M, and N, which genuinely fit into the entire narrative, with Cave N serving to link the Caves of Chaos to Quasquentin. There is quite a bit of original artwork here, too, that is both old-school evocative and entertaining, and does a great job of illustrating characters in the encounters described in the modules, and enhancing my overall enjoyment of this book. In many respects, this 384-page monstrosity of a tome is overindulgent and excessive. However, I can't help but love it. It's clear a lot of love and care went into its production, and the new encounters make something old and cherished new again, and I would really love the opportunity to run it for a group of new players. The book concludes with colored glossy page reprints of all the module covers and maps, though if I have one complaint, it has to do with the Caves of Chaos reprint, which is well done, but the binding cuts off a section, making it difficult to see how the two sections connect. For a map of this size, it really should have been a folding pullout. In conclusion, if you are an old-school game enthusiast or a newer player curious about this classic and legendary adventure and would like to run it for your 5th edition group of players, I'd say you really can't go wrong here. The articles are all enjoyable reads, the original modules are wonderfully preserved, and the 5th edition updates and additions are top-notch work, making this a must-have. Anyway, that brings this video to a conclusion. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful and informative. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to click that little bell so you get notifications when I upload more videos, which hopefully will be more frequent. I keep saying that, uh, but I really mean it this time. Really. No, really. Really, I really mean it. Anyway, uh, I've got quite a few things in the queue, the least of which is that infamous Mask of Gnarlet Hotep review I've been meaning to do for the last two years. As it turns out, Chaosium has just released the seventh edition of that adventure, so now is a great time to do it. So stay tuned. Also, Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes is out, which is a great read, and I'm going to take a look inside. Finally, I've got a real special announcement coming up over the next few weeks. Otherwise, my friends, may your D20 always roll true, and game on.